The most basic skill any golfer needs to learn is the ability to control the low point of their golf swing. Yet for so many of you, this seemingly simple looking task is not simple at all. And it's the root cause of all the inconsistency and the struggle that you have out on the golf course. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a simple drill you can do both indoors and outdoors to work specifically on the skill of controlling your low point, which will dramatically improve your ball striking. My original plan for this video was to shoot it while I was outdoors on location at the Claude Harmon Performance Academy in Dubai while I was on vacation last week. But unfortunately, some technical issues meant that the audio wasn't usable. However, I've salvaged the video footage itself and I'm gonna use that to explain how you can work on this most vital skill of low point control. So by now, I hope we're already familiar with the concept that we're supposed to hit the ball first and the ground second, but you just wanna learn how to do it. For expert players, the low point of their swing is always after the ball with all shots struck from the ground. However, for the average amateur golfer, the low point of their swing is all too often behind the ball. This leads to shots which are topped, thin, fat, all sorts of inconsistent contact, which is ultimately breeding the inconsistency that you want to change. And there's a truly strong correlation between a golfer's ability to control the low point and their handicap. And this is because controlling the low point results in more consistent contact. More consistent contact results in more predictable distance. Hitting the ball a predictable distance allows you to hit the ball closer to your intended target more often. But mastering this basic skill of controlling the low point is so often overlooked because it looks so simple to do that stack and tilt describe controlling the low point as the very first fundamental that golfers need to learn and it separates golfers of different skill levels. Now it is what links all these good players together and the first piece that links them all together is their ability to hit the ground in the same spot. That was the first piece. To be any good at this game, you've got to be able to control where the club hits the ground. And a huge factor that's influencing your ability to control the low point of your swing would be the location of your weight throughout the swing. So you think about chipping for a second and how you're taught to chip. Generally speaking, you're told to put the ball slightly back in your stance. We're taught to put the weight more to the front, have the handle slightly forwards. And all of these setup modifications are based on the idea of helping you to strike down slightly on the ball, hit the ball first, hit the grass second. Exactly what we're looking to do with all of our full shots. So if I put the ball back, the hands forward and keep my weight forward, the likelihood is I'm gonna get that nice crisp contact of hitting the ball first and the mat second. And you shouldn't lose the basic concept of controlling the low point for a chip shot around the green even as your swing lengthens out and you begin to hit the ball more distance. The second fundamental of stack and tilt describes hitting the ball far enough while still controlling the low point. And I think that combination is often overlooked by many. There are lots of people who say as the swing starts to get longer, we need to start to shift our weight. But that shifting of the swing centers and moving around starts to deteriorate your ability to control the first fundamental, the low point. So all of a sudden, in a quest for more distance or to hit the ball further, you're now not able to hit the ball solidly. And if you can't hit the ball solidly, it doesn't really matter how far you could hit it. I often use and share this YouTube video of Stack and Tilt's Mike Bennett hitting 17 shots in a row from a white line that he's painted on the ground on the driving range. His ability to control the low point is only matched by the game's best players. And he's doing it while still hitting the ball far and controlling the direction. This is truly an expert demonstration and it was this drill that inspired me to have a go myself while I was in Dubai last week to try and match Mike's drill. And as I attempted the drill myself, I was struck by how useful it was in terms of bringing back quality ball striking to my game. And the more balls I hit, the better my ball striking got because I was concentrating on hitting the ball first and the ground second. If you have access to a grass hitting area on your driving range, you simply must make this drill part of your regular practice routine. You can use different clubs doing this exercise and you can highlight potential weaknesses in your bag in terms of clubs that you strike better than others. And that can help you to genuinely see some improvement in your ball striking and overall consistency, which should relate to lower scores on the golf course. But if you don't have access to a grass range, you still need to be able to work on this skill. So I'm gonna show you two ways that you can do that. One of those is using a box of golf balls and the other one is our old friend, the divot board. Let's start with the golf ball box drill, okay? We're gonna take it and we're gonna place it down on the ground, one grip 
length behind the golf ball. So we've got the back of the golf ball, the grip, and then the box of golf balls. When you start this drill, I want you to begin with a pitching wedge or nine iron, make some practice swings just to the side of the ball here, where you're trying to avoid the box, both on the backswing, then the downswing, and take a look at where your club is bottoming out. This is an excellent exercise to train good low point control. It's gonna encourage two things to happen that you may not be doing as well as you need to. Number one, it's gonna encourage the wrists to start to set early and in a way that encourages you to have a bit more shaft lean when you hit the ball. And number two, it's gonna encourage you to have your weight sufficiently forwards so that you're not gonna strike the box at any time during the swing. So many of you may try this and notice that number one, you hit the box on the way back, or number two, you may miss it on the way back, but as you're coming in to hit the ball, you make contact with the ball box on the way down. The goal here is to miss the box of balls, and I would encourage you to do that with practice swings first before you progress onto hitting the ball. Once you've had success at missing the box with practice swings, I'm gonna introduce the ball. As I say, start out with wedges and nine irons, begin with some smaller swings to start with if you need to, to ensure that you get that ball first, ground second contact. Solid shot, ball first, ground second. You may find this quite difficult to do in the beginning because it's an extremely different way of you hitting the ball than what you're used to. This is gonna to start to produce the sort of alignments at impact that the best players are able to produce in terms of hitting the ball first and the ground second, hitting down, and getting that really solid feeling of compression on the golf ball. Secondly, you can do it using this fantastic training aid called the divot board. I've spoken about this in previous videos and I'll link that down in the description below. The divot board will show you exactly where your club has hit the ground. When you strike the board, the board changes color. So what you can do here, if you're an owner of one of these already or if you wanna get your hands on one, is you can take the divot board concept and you can add the golf ball box concept to this as well by placing the golf ball box at the back of the divot board and go ahead and get feedback on exactly where you're hitting the ground using the ball box as your reference. And conveniently, it just so happens that the distance between the back of the golf ball on the divot board and the back of the board itself is a grip length in distance. I'm not sure if they did that on purpose, but it's perfect now for me to put the golf ball box at the back of the divot board and start out making practice swings, trying to make sure I miss the box on the backswing and the downswing, hit the mat and get my feedback. You're gonna see there that I hit the ground perfectly in the middle of that golf ball that's on the divot board with my divot being after the golf ball. So for your ultimate indoor practice station for controlling the low point, We've got the divot board on the ground, we've got the box of balls at the back of the divot board, and now I've been successful with my practice swings, I've introduced the ball itself, I'm gonna go ahead and hit one. Really nice shot, felt solid, ball first, ground second. This is really the number one skill that you should be trying to develop when you practice. So there are three specific ways you can practice your low point control. Number one, if you're outdoors on the driving range on the grass, you can scratch a line or paint a line on the ground and try to replicate the Mike Bennett 17 shots in a row drill. I want you to try this drill the next time you practice out on the grass and I want you to post in the comments below how many times you were able to strike the ball first and the ground second without missing a shot. The first shot that you thin top or hit the ground behind the ball is when you stop the count, I want you to post that number in the comments below. Secondly, at the driving range, you can use the golf ball box on the mat. Remember, place it one grip length behind the ball. I want you to do the same counting exercise. I wanna see how many shots in succession you can hit where you strike the ball first and you don't make contact with the golf ball box. Post that number down in the comments as well. And finally, for those of you that have a divot board, you've got the divot board exercise where you can see how many times you hit the ball first and mark the mat after the ball. Post the number of times you can do that in a row down in the comments below. I think you'll be shocked at how little that number is to begin with, but it gives you an exceptionally good chance now of working on this skill to specifically improve the quality of your low point control, which will directly improve your golf score.
If you're interested in getting yourself one of these, I'm gonna put the link down in the description below and I'll also link to the most recent video I did on the divot board itself. You can see that down in the description and I'll put it up on the screen at the end. If you enjoyed today's video, please do hit that like button. It helps the video to be seen by more people and if it's your first time here, do consider hitting that subscribe button for more golf related content. Final thank you today to the Claude Harmon Performance Academy at the Ells Club in Dubai for allowing me to film on site last week. It truly is a stunning venue and I'd encourage anybody who's in Dubai to check it out for themselves. If you want to go ahead and learn more about the divot board and how to control the low point, go ahead and click this video right here. If you want to see the video I made last week at the Claude Harmon Academy at the Ells Club in Dubai on aim point and is it good or is it bad, then you can go ahead and click this link right here.